Joined now by political commentator Matthew Stadden and the spectators James Heal. Matthew, I'm going to start with you. Um, West Streeting, they're kind of backpedalling on previous comments he's made surrounding the trans so called debate. But at the end of the day, it's true, is it not, that somebody who has legally transitioned is legally defined as a woman if they've transitioned from male to female? Correct. I think there are different strands to this whole thing. And we know that toxicity is a massive player in this. And that was punched out in the CAS reports to the extent that toxicity has impacted the availability and quality of evidence for the care of children. So when we're talking about children, children have to be absolutely front and centre and they should not be the victims of the culture wars on either side. And there's horrible, horrible stuff coming from both sides. As far as is a trans woman a trans woman? Yes, a trans woman is, is a woman or she's a, a trans woman. She's, she, she was born biologically male. She's still biologically male, but she sees herself and is legally defined as a woman. Mm -hmm. And certainly I would not call a trans woman a man, because I think it's offensive. Do I think that should be illegal? Probably not. Should people be able to describe biology, bio biological reality, as it is? Yes, they should. But can we take the toxicity out of it? Can we take the personal abuse out of it? Because children, particularly, but also adults and their well-being have to be front and centre. And Isn't... this was a finding of the CAS report, yeah. wasn't it, um, James, that, you know, at the centre of this are very... Whichever side you, you fall on, very vulnerable children mm. who are reaching out to health services because they want help. Absolutely. And I think what comes out of the cash report, a product of you know, four years of work, 388 pages, is really, I think, perhaps the sense of the NHS services, identity services being, to an extent, overwhelmed because of this has been such a huge trend over the past 10 years. I think the Tavistock Clinic, for one example, had about uh, 500 referrals, sorry, 250 referrals in 2011, but more than 5,000 referrals by 2021. So that's a factor fold of 20 over mm. the past 10 well, years. Well, I said so. it yesterday and it wasn't very popular, although actually a couple of people agreed. I absolutely agree with you, right? I do think that the that the children angle is massively, massively important. I believe that we should be spending our time, which is what the CAST report says, not doling out puberty blockers. We should spend time psychologically talking and counselling to these kids. But there was a it was a comment from one of our one of our contributors yesterday, which is it's fashionable, and that is a concern. And people might not like this, but you talk about this this tenfold increase, and you wonder whether there are youngsters who are acting like sheep. And that is why it is frightening, and that is why there should be controls in place. It's not about disrespect respecting what people want to be or what they are. It's about saying, these are kids. And I absolutely... That is such a relevant well, point. I, I think my, I've said all along through this debate that experts should be in charge. The problem is that there might not be very good evidence one way or another. Mm. I mean, my instinct is, and this is so personal to me, and every single person watching or listening today will have their own view. My instinct is that children shouldn't be making any sort of irreversible changes to their bodies. But I have to have humility, because what do I know? Mm. I mean, I'm a, I'm a young dad, my child is 18 months, I don't have experience of children now I, I grew up in a time when there was no one trans or almost no one almost no one trans so i have to have humility and i think we could all do with a bit of humility yeah, and my point was on this is the, is the relative novelty of this which is that we don't know yet the longer term effects of this mm. when you get places like the, the, the kira bell mm. case for instance where someone regrets the decision they made and said it was done on insufficient evidence and that was one of the things takeaways from this report which is that actually puberty blocks for instance have been referred to without seeing the long-term effects of that in clinical trials and the question is why are we upscaling that as a rolling out it, elsewhere it's not the issue the evidence? It's not the issue, as we seem to find with so many... We were talking about this yesterday. The great thing about the Castro report is that we're having this debate. We're having it in a, in a, in a, in a balanced way because, you know, it, you not can't have these that, debates because yeah. you're transphobic or you can't have... It. The fact of the matter is... You just said it. There were no trans people. So, so it, there so, were no, trans no, people. There were trans they people. Weren't... There, there weren't. There, I didn't know any trans right. people growing okay. up, and also there were p far fewer people identifying as trans. Does that mean there weren't no. any genuinely trans people? No, I don't think it does. I think that there were many things going on 40 years ago when I was a kid that are going on now and abhorrent. But you didn't have social media. You didn't know about it. I've said that for a long time. What I'm saying is, I think we as a society shouldn't be scared of having this debate. I think you're absolutely right about kids, but I think we should be spending time and resources 
resources and counselling on making sure this monumental decision is right. But the problem is, if you say that in the past, you're, oh, you're against somebody changing. I don't believe, and I don't care if I get thrown out this studio, at 13 or 14, you know mm. genuinely whether you should be able to change. I don't think you're ready for this. Well, so as, I've, as, really I've, as I've already said, Jeremy, my instinct is that children should not be able to do irreversible things yeah. to their bodies. But that's my instinct. And yeah. I'm, not a, I'm, I'm not an expert. But the other thing is, I may be wrong. You know, I may be wrong. And if you are trans, I'm going to use this word carefully, but if you are genuinely trans as a child and you go on to live a life as a trans man or as a trans woman, you can imagine how painful it must be as a child not being allowed to change your mm -hmm. your, your your physicality to represent mm -hmm. who you to, to show who you think you are. I think, Difficult. I think the key thing here is that you know they may be right, they may be wrong, but the key point is having those safeguards in place to ensure yes. that any decisions are made, long-term decisions which can affect Agreed. their bodies forever on the basis of evidence, and that's what we need to. Basis change. of evidence and the best interests of the child. Absolutely. We're going to move Gotta on now to this, a Nick. slightly lighter topic. <laughs> there God. has been a poll that yes. suggests that only 13% of Brits trust Rishi Sunak to put mm. up a shelf, compared to 47% who choose Keir Starmer. There's lots of other um, examples Apparently here. Apparently, Starmer's better to have a chat at the pub. Well, that's the key one, Jeremy and Nicola. That is the key one. Which one? Who would, the, you... The, the, who would you... Who would be better to have a chat with in the pub? And mm. Starmer wins this, I think, overwhelmingly. And soon I can get you a discount at the shops because he's got a billion quid and doesn't give a damn, probably. James, who, who would you prefer to put up a shelf in your Well, house. clearly, son of a toolmaker, Keir Starmer, is <laughs> resonating <laughs> I, with the British public. I think, I think that might be tools it. Okay. <laughs> oh but if we're talking about, if, guys, if we're talking about connectivity between the electorate and our politicians, then it sort of matters on some level or is seen to matter whether you could sit down with a pint. That was what was part of the appeal of Nigel yeah, you're Farage. Making, you're, making, you're making this ser serious, but there is a point here. I, they are both as boring as each other, are they not? I, they suspect do not. In, I suspect in private they're both quite good conversation. What? I suspect in private they're both quite good really? conversation. Really? You're in a very nice I, I, look, today. Like yesterday, last e yesterday evening, I was on stage with the former Prime Minister, Theresa May, and I criticised her a lot when she was Prime Minister. Was she good company? Yes, she was. Look, when it comes Theresa to May. putting up a shelf, we <laughs> yes. know that you would need a hammer and a nail in which to do that. And it's not oh, the no. first time that Rishi Sunak's been seen holding a hammer. Let's take a look. Yeah, but this is fake news, Nicola. What's so this doing? is Rishi Sunak, who was... He was told videoed. to do it that way, Nicola. He was videoed Are hammering... unfair? Hammering was... a nail. Let me finish. Well, he he, was, he, just, he faced a lot of criticism for using the side of a nail. He was criticised for not knowing how to use a hammer properly. It went properly, viral. And it went viral. But, but... in his defence, he was told by the lady that was uh, accompanying him the there... the public have bought the fake news. I don't exactly, think the other, the other, that he should use The other fun phrase. takeaway from this was that uh, more people would trust Rishi Sunak to leave them out of an escape room. So maybe it's probably easier than leading the Tory party. But, I uh, think so. Aren't, aren't we, yeah. We're in a, a nationwide escape room at the moment, it feels like, <laughs> doesn't it, James? But is he the man it's to lead It's quite though, we were saying earlier about how, you know, after all the chaos of the last few years, suddenly these two politicians, these two leaders, are the sort of bank manager, yeah. dour, straight, and, you know, Labour is trying desperately to prove that they are right on everything. But you look at Suna, he talked... I mean, I said this this morning, he talked about, I'm going to do this differently after the chaos. The Tory party is in a worse position than it was under Liz Truss right now. Look, which tells you everything. Let me just quickly say one thing on that, because we, we're often on here talking about the polls and how devastating they are for the Tories, and yeah. they are, and I think Labour will win quite convincingly. But Theresa May, last night, when I asked her about this, she said, remember what happened in 2017 when she called that disastrous snap election mm. to try and increase the majority? Right up until about the last week, it looked like the Tories would win convincingly and they lost their majority. So things can go different ways. We, you, we have to take the, the I do, I do the think, picture of I do salt. think there is a difference between now and 2017. And I, and I think that... I don't know if it's 14 years. I don't know whether there's just an apathy about... I think they just... 14 years I, I think, desire for change. I think it's a, bit, it's a bit like the Manchester United players are saying Ten Hag looks like he knows he's a busted flush at Man United. The Tory party, to me, look like they know the writing's on the wall. And it doesn't so. seem I, to be well, much Look at the number of people who are leaving. I think the fact that the polls have shifted so little since the last May, May elections suggests to me that people actually have got news avoidance. They're kind of tuned out, they've made their judgment, nothing much is changing it, the budget didn't affect them, the fiscal statement in the autumn didn't. So I think they're waiting to cast their judgment until the short campaign. I don't think anything will change, really. Do you think it's natural 
feel that after 14 years, this is kind of the cycle of politics. Yes. It was inevitable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you cycle through your talent, uh, people trust you less. And this is the thing Rishi Sunak can promise the world right now. People won't believe it. That's the key thing. It's about credibility. It's and about course, stopping listening. Yeah, and of course, and, every, and also the Tory party's changed. So the government of 2010 was very different from now. So people will say, well, why are you running up against the challenges you set yourself? Things like the European Union, for instance. Well, that was all the policies of 10 years ago. So the whole party's changed. That makes it much more difficult for the government. Uh, but it's very interesting, isn't it? You, you, you just said something there about he, he could almost do anything and nothing will change. I think people, I think you're right, I think they've made their minds yeah. up and this is why there's a clamour for an election. But I will say, and I shall watch Stadlin's face and, and Corporal Thorpe's, oh. I don't believe for any minute of my life that in 12 months' time we will be any better off and I feel the reality of where we're at as a country, both in terms of the world and now, is not going to get any better. That's why I, I watched the Labour Party, you know, Rachel Reeves saying there isn't any money, which is a massive change for them. We are in a bad position and I think that... And I think it's going to rain is... down on Starmer instead of Sunak in a few months' time. As we've discussed before, you know, quite big figures like Sir Vince Cable, who was leader of the Lib Dems, like Andrew Marr, who's a respected political commentator and presenter, they have said, I think, you know, what happens in two years' time when Starmer isn't able to change things, when he fails mm -hmm. to deliver because times are so tough? What happens then? Is there a lurch to, mm -hmm. to the right? I think the cyclical point here is key because I'm not sure there is a vast enthusiasm for Labour, but first 18 years of my life, Tory, 14, the next 14 years, Labour, or 13 years, now 14 years of Tories. Our system goes like that. How old are you? Very old. <laughs>